With its ever-growing collection of creatures, it's hard not to want to step inside the wonderful world of Pokemon. But you'd be surprised to know just how many of these lovable pocket monsters have astounding similarities to very real life forms in our own world. From dragons made of leaves to a real life ditto, grab your Pokeballs, young trainer, you're gonna need them. Here are the most amazing Pokemon characters caught in real life. A veteran of Pokemon's first generation, Pidgey is one of the earliest Pokemon many new players come across on their introduction to the franchise. Despite its name, Pidgey doesn't look anything like a pigeon and more closely resembles other birds in the passerine family, including pibbits, larks, and sparrows. Pidgey also looks a lot like a female rose-breasted grosbeak as shown in this impressive side-by-side -side snap shared by a Pokemon Go player in 2019. While it may not look like a pigeon, the bird type does display a lot of similar behaviors. Most notably, its homing senses, which are utilized in Pokemon's national Pidgey mail service, where the bird types carry mail and parcels around the Pokemon world. While there isn't an exact real-life match for Pidgey's spiked feather hairdo out there, there's plenty of very real-looking Pokemon artwork and Photoshop's online for us to daydream over. Certainly enough to keep us happy while we wait for genetic engineering to reach a point where Pokemon can become a real thing. While Pidgey is undeniably cute, there's some Pokemon out there that are a lot less welcoming. Arbok, for example, is a serpentine poison type Pokemon that instills fear into any trainer it comes up against. While Arbok's distinctively bright purple scales make it stand out in the Pokemon universe, its design takes inspiration from very real snakes, specifically the Indian Cobra. While Arbok is a slightly modified version of Cobra, spelled backwards, unlike Arbok, the Indian Cobra is usually tan, brown, or green in color to help camouflage it from unsuspecting prey. However, there are still many physical similarities between these two slippery fellows. The most notable parallel is the menacing looking hood that juts out from the side of their heads, each displaying bold patterns to stun enemies. Both Arbok and the Indian Cobra are very territorial, lashing out at intruders with long fangs enriched with venom. Arbok doesn't merely possess the venomous nature of a cobra, however. It also has the ability to defeat opponents by crushing them in the same way a real-life python or boa constrictor would. While much of the inspiration behind Arbok's design can be found in real life, another of its abilities comes from the world of legend. This Cobra Pokemon's glare ability, which frightens foes into paralysis, is inspired by the legendary Basilisk, said to have the ability to freeze or kill people with its deadly stare. Thanks to the power of Photoshop, we can get a glimpse of what a real-life Arbok would really look like, just like this one shared on image manipulation contest site Worth 1000 back in the early 2000s. And while there are some pretty gorgeous looking snakes in our real world, I can't help wishing we had a purple monster like this available as a pet. From one ravenous reptilian to another, you only have to look at Crocodile to see that this ground dark type is inspired by none other than the crocodile. Unlike any crocodilians in real life, Crocodile has a thick maroon colored body, black back, and white stomach. But while its outlandish colors are certainly unusual, it has a very close link to one particular real-life crocodilian you may never have heard of. Crocodile's narrow snout isn't common in most crocodiles, but it is very similar to that of the gharial, a rare type of fish-eating crocodile found in India and Nepal. These elongated snouts allow the real-world reptiles to maneuver through water and snap down on fish with deadly speed and precision. What's more, male gharials also bear a lumpy growth at the end of the snout, which they use to help loudly resonate a hissing sound to capture the attention of potential mates. Because of habitat loss due to human encroachment, hunting, and overfishing, the gharial species is currently considered critically endangered. It's estimated that there are approximately 650 adult gharials remaining in the wild, with a shocking population decrease of 98% in less than a century. While Crocodile will live forever inside the Pokemon franchise, let's hope that the Great Gharial wins its fight for survival. One of the most popular starter Pokemon out there, many fans have a special place in their heart for Bulbasaur. In terms of its body, the real world inspiration for Bulbasaur is difficult to pin down as its design is clearly inspired by a mix of different animals. Bulbasaur's broad mouth and wide set eyes are common characteristics among the Anurin family 
which includes frogs and toads, while its shell-like bulb is more reminiscent of tortoises and turtles, looking rather like a cute, angry little turtle, that shell on Bulbasaur's back raises the question, are there any real animals that can grow plants on their bodies? Outside of the world of Photoshop frog garlic clove combos? Well, surprisingly, the answer is yes. The adorable Costasilla Kuroshime, more commonly known as the leaf sheep, is a species of sea slug found in waters near Japan, the Philippines, and Indonesia. While Bulbasaur sports just one iconic bulb on its back, the leaf sheep has a whole coat of greenery covering its little body. In fact, the leaf sheep is one of very few multicellular organisms that has the ability to photosynthesize, just like plants. The microscopic leaf sheep grazes on green algae in the water and retains special plant cells known as chloroplasts. It then stores these chloroplasts in its big green leaf-like appendages to photosynthesize energy from sunlight, allowing the little slug to live for months on end without any need for food. This process is known as kleptoplasty, a literal translation from the Greek word klepto, meaning thief, and plasty, as in chloroplast. While they may look visually different, like the leaf sheep, Bulbasaur's back bulb is the source of many of its powers. With its moveset including synthesis, Pokemon's equivalent of photosynthesis, it seems Bulbasaur might have even more in common with our sea slug friend than it seems. While Bulbasaur might be the first Pokemon listed in the Pokedex, there are other Pokemon out there that are thought to have wandered the Poke world for millions of years. In the Pokemon world, fossils of prehistoric Pokemon are items players can use to revive into living Pokemon. One such fossil Pokemon is Kabuto, a rock water type that can be revived from a dome fossil. In-game lore states Kabuto is technically extinct, aside from resurrected versions, having originally thrived 300 million years ago. If you're thinking that a past like that is solely reserved for fiction, then think again, as Kabuto's ancient origins are drawn from very real natural history. The only difference is that our real-world equivalent has never gone extinct. Kabuto's real-world relative is the horseshoe crab, which are also classified as living fossils and have existed nearly completely unchanged for at least 445 million years, long before even dinosaurs existed. Sporting a nearly identical appearance to that of Kabuto, the horseshoe crab is encased in a hard helmet-like shell which conceals a multitude of spindly legs and pincers beneath. Strangely, the horseshoe crab isn't actually a crab and is more closely related to spiders and scorpions. And speaking of prehistoric-looking critters, Kabuto also bears a striking resemblance to the giant isopod, a colossal crustacean found in cold, deep waters the world over. Kabuto's red eyes are one of its most prominent features, and the isopod follows suit, sporting some seriously creepy-looking large eyes, which thankfully aren't red. On to more creepy crawlies now, and you'll need some strong Pokemon to face this next one. The fighting bug type Heracross bears many similarities to the Japanese rhinoceros beetle, which are known for their incredible strength. Rhinoceros beetles are one of the strongest animals on the planet, relative to their size, with the ability to lift more than 100 times their own body weight. That'd be like a human lifting around seven refrigerators. Living up to its name, the male rhinoceros beetle sports a distinctive horn on its head, just like Heracross, which it uses to fling sexual competitors off of mating sites, which are usually in trees. I usually challenge my romantic competitors to a battle of wits, but to each their own. When kicked into Mega Evolution mode, where stats are temporarily boosted, Mega Heracross takes on an appearance that looks to be based on the Hercules beetle. This Herculean insect also served as the inspiration for this fighting type's name, as Heracles is the Greek god equivalent of Hercules. And now you are in possession of some truly godly knowledge. You're welcome. One of the secondary character Brock's most trusted Pokemon in the anime, Krogonk, bears a striking resemblance to a not-so-friendly real-world creature, the Poison Dart Frog. This colorful character of the animal kingdom has evolved a bold exterior as a great big warning sign to predators to keep away in a phenomenon known as aposmatism. While real poison dart frogs only grow to around one to two inches in length, they secrete enough potent toxins in their skin to cause great harm to humans. The golden poison dart frog, for example, produces enough toxin to kill 10 adult men. As the only poison fighting type Pokemon in existence, as of early 2022, Krogunk isn't one of the best defensive Pokemon out there, but it can pack a real punch when it comes to attacks. 
While the real world blue poison dart frog doesn't actually shoot any darts or have any stingers, Krogunk makes up for that slightly disappointing reality with its own poison sting move, in which a poison barb is stabbed at its opponent. Honestly, I don't know if it'd be cool or just plain terrifying for real poison dart frogs to be able to snipe foes with poisonous projectiles from a distance, but I'd certainly watch an anime about that. While a team including Krogunk is sure to see trainers hop to new heights, this next critter puts the poke in Pokemon. By just its appearance alone, you can probably guess that Picky Peck is based on a woodpecker, but wait until you see just how similar this Pokemon really looks to a specific real life species. The pileated woodpecker is the largest woodpecker in all of North America, and its coloration is larger than life too. Both the pileated woodpecker and Picky Peck possess a flaming red crest, white markings around their face and breast, as well as being mostly covered in black plumage. Picky Peck can peck at a rate of 16 times a second to drill holes in trees, but surprisingly, most real life woodpeckers can do better than this. Woodpeckers have incredibly strong neck muscles that power up to 20 pecks per second, and a focused pileated woodpecker can excavate two holes, reaching six inches deep within around two hours. Never before has a six inch pecker seemed so impressive. Hmm, I see no way that sentence can be misconstrued. A lot of the time a Pokemon's name can give you a big clue as to its real world inspiration, and Zigzagoon is no exception. Zigzagoon's name and bandito masked appearance suggest that it is based on a raccoon, but that's not all, as it also shares several similarities with the Japanese raccoon dog. Intriguingly, despite their shared names and similar appearances, raccoons aren't related to raccoon dogs at all. The latter are from the Canid family, alongside foxes, dogs, and wolves, while raccoons themselves belong to the Procyonid family, which is native to North and South America and includes such fun named animals as the Kinkajou and Olinguito. Also known as the Tanuki, the Japanese raccoon dog has played a significant role in folklore since ancient times. While Tanukis are very much real, they have a reputation for magic, just like certain Pokemon. Legends say that if you wander through the Japanese forest lands and hear music, you might just be hearing a Tanuki beating on his magic belly drum, which he uses to lure people off the beaten path until they're lost. Zigzagoon also has its very own belly bashing ability in the form of the risky belly drum move, which maximizes a user's attack while sacrificing HP. If only beating our bellies like a drum could make us humans stronger too. Wars would look a whole lot different. More furry friends now. Let's say hello to one of the newer pups on the block. Yamper was officially revealed as the 835th Pokemon in 2019 and quickly won trainers hearts with its truly adorable appearance. Unsurprisingly, Yamper was inspired by man's best friend, a puppy, a Welsh Corgi to be specific. Yamper's connection to the real world is quite the royal affair, seeing as Welsh Corgis are the favorite dog breed of none other than Queen Elizabeth II. Yamper's British connections don't stop there though, as it's a very popular herding Pokemon in Sword and Shield's Galar region, which itself was inspired by none other than the United Kingdom. Regal indeed. A ground type Pokemon introduced in generation one, Sandshrew is known to have poisonous claws, similar to how some species of real-world shrew can deliver a neurotoxic bite. However, despite its shrew-focused name, anatomically, Sandshrew's real-life mirror image comes in the form of the Sunda Pangolin. These peculiar creatures can be found throughout Southeast Asia and share Sandshrew's tough yellow hide, which in our real-world counterparts consists of as many as a thousand tough keratin scales that protect them from dangerous predators. When in danger, both Sandshrew and the Pangolin will curl up into a ball to defend themselves, showing only the hard scaled back, which as you can imagine, isn't the easiest thing to tuck into. Out of all the various categories a Pokemon can fall into, Ice type is the rarest. And while the Alolan variant of Sandshrew might look like an Igloo, this next Pokemon will have you walking in a winter wonderland. Introduced in generation two, Delibird is a dual type ice and flying Pokemon. And a lot of players fail to notice the little fellows look a lot like penguins, albeit sunburn penguins. Specifically, the overall appearance inspiration of Delibird comes from the Rockhopper penguin, a species whose distinctive head feathers can be spotted on shorelines across the Southern Hemisphere. However, in a surprising twist, Delibird's red and white coloring and beard-like chest plumage is drawn from the North Pole's best kept secret, Santa Claus. 
Delibird is a combination of delivery and bird, on account of its sack-like tail that it holds in its hands, and its ability to give presents. Just like Santa, it looks like Delibird has its very own naughty and nice list, as its signature move, Present, has a set percentage chance of either dealing damage against an opponent or healing it for a quarter of its maximum HP. From snow to sea now, and water type Pokemon make up around 20% of entries in the Pokedex, making them the most common type of all. It's not surprising, really, given that our real world oceans are filled with a whole host of bizarre looking critters. The inspiration for Pokemon are boundless. For example, with a name combining dragon and algae, the pocket monster Dragalge bears a close resemblance to a bizarre real world creature known as the Weedy Sea Dragon. Related to seahorses, not only does the Weedy Sea Dragon match up to Dragalge's fantastical pink and purple coloring, but it also bears leaf-like appendages shooting out of its body. Weedy Sea Dragons are also connected to the Leafy Sea Dragon, an even more ornately camouflaged creature that uses its grassy appearance to hide from predators by blending in with algae, just like Dragalge does. Somewhat like the stick insects and leaf insects found on land, it's all about blending in with the surrounding habitat and I can't help wondering what happened if future humans evolved to blend in with theirs. Yeah, let's hope that never happens, shall we? Just like real life animals, there are Pokemon that have vastly different variations depending on their geographical location. Shellos is one example, and while both iterations of this water type Pokemon might look fantastical, there's actually a very real creature that looks just like it. Nudibranchia, more commonly known as sea slugs, is the group term for the soft-bodied marine creatures famed for their often extraordinary colors and patterns. Like sea slugs, Shellos' appearances change drastically, depending on which underwater environment it calls home. While there are just two types of Shellos, there are around 3,000 species of sea slug on record, so it seems only natural that there are some twinning varieties that match up with this multicolored Pokemon. West Sea Shellos shares a lot of physical characteristics with Hypsilodorus bullocky, including its pink and yellow coloring as well as similarly shaped protrusions from its body. East Sea Shellos blue body, meanwhile, is very similar to that of Chromodorus locky. Like Shellos, this species of sea slug has a distinctive striped frill separating its upper body from its underbelly, as well as being blue with two little antenna. Who'd have thought a slug could be so oddly charming? While we're adrift, let's take a quick deep dive to find the inspiration for this next outlandish Pokemon. While not a water type itself, the closest real world equivalent we have for the shape-shifting pocket monster Ditto is found in the deep ocean. While Ditto's transformative abilities are one of its most useful weapons, the same can't be said for its real life twin, the Blobfish. You see, while this gelatinous mold of gunk may look exactly like Ditto, it turns out it doesn't even really look like an all-natural blobfish either. You see, the blobfish only looks this way above the water. In its normal habitat, which is around 2,000 to 4,000 feet below the ocean surface, the higher pressure down there makes the blobfish almost look more like a regular, uninflated pufferfish. Ditto's shape-shifting skills can also be linked to a type of microorganism called an amoeba. Amoebas are single-celled organisms commonly found in water, and like Ditto, Amoeba has the ability to alter its shape by extending and retracting itself. That said, these organisms can't quite match the amorphous Ditto's ability to transform into an exact replica of any object or living creature. While no organism on Earth possesses Ditto's cute, gormless appearance and abilities exactly, fans have created silicon models of the Pokemon that come pretty close. Seems it's a fine line between adorable and repulsive. One last stop at the water surface now. Alamomola was introduced in Pokemon's fifth generation, living in the open seas. Unlike most fish, Alamomola lacks a proper tail fin, and its unique shape means that the water type has to swim using its very large dorsal fins. While a fish without a tail may seem unbelievable, Alamomola's appearance is based on Mola Mola, also known as the giant ocean sunfish, which grows around six feet long. As per their name, sunfish spend a lot of their time at the ocean surface, basking in the rays to regulate their body temperature after diving deeply looking for delicious jellyfish to devour. More a lover than a fighter, Alamomola has its own way of bringing a bit of sunshine to life with its ability to heal weaker injured Pokemon and deliver them back to shore, living up to its heart-shaped appearance. 
The first Pokemon in the beloved Charizard's evolution line, few starter Pokemon are as popular as Charmander. Anatomically, Charmander shares a lot of characteristics with the red-spotted newt, an amphibian found throughout North America. On account of its bright orange coloring, the red-spotted newt is a dead ringer for Charmander, but appearances are where the similarities end. Unlike newts, who prefer damp foliage, rich environments, Charmander thrives in hot, mountainous areas. While Charmander shares its appearance with newts, its namesake comes from the vaguely similar lizard-like amphibian, the Salamander, a creature with a rich background in folklore. Like mythical versions of salamanders spoken of in ancient Eurasian and Arabian legends, Charmander has a strong elemental affinity with fire and can actually live within flames. That being said, despite its name, if you try to activate a real salamander's latent ancestral flame powers, you'll just end up with an extra crispy, extra dead ex-amphibian. So leave that stuff to Charmander. On to another fire starter now. Fennekin was first introduced as part of Generation 6. And while you might assume those disproportionately large ears and bushy tail are reserved for the world of cartoons, you'd be wrong. This is a Fennec Fox, the true life inspiration for the adorable little Fennekin. Just like their Pokemon counterpart, Fennec Foxes have an affinity for heat. They can be found in the Arava, Nagav, and Sahara deserts, where they stay cool by sleeping in burrows during the day and emerge to hunt and forage under cover of darkness. But unlike its big-eared real-world counterpart, the flaming Fennekin Pokemon also draws inspiration from Japanese folklore and the legend of the fox spirit, Kitsune. Like Fennekin, Kitsune is a fox-like creature that possesses paranormal skills, including the ability to breathe fire. This parallels the fire-type Pokemon's blaze ability, which boosts fire moves, as well as its aptitude for puffing 390-degree Fahrenheit hot air out of its ears to intimidate opponents. The real-world Fennec Fox, meanwhile, uses its ears for the opposite purpose, to dissipate body heat over a large surface area to cool it down in the desert. And while it may still be scary to the insects and small lizards it hunts, I don't think the Fennec Fox is going to be matching its Pokemon counterpart's intimidation abilities anytime soon. Just look at that little face. Do you know of any more real-life animals that inspired Pokemon? Or any animals that you think should be Pokemon? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.